been on call to order this regular meeting of the Carabelle Community Redevelopment Agency. It's Tuesday, March 21st, 2023, 1.30 p.m., and we're conducting this meeting in the Carabelle City Hall Chambers. Commissioner Millender will open our meeting with a prayer, and then I will lead with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. <coughs> Let us pray. Most glorious and gracious Heavenly Father, again we come before you and thank you for the many blessings that you give us on a daily basis. And we are here today again conducting business for our great city and ask for your guidance and wisdom in our proceedings as we move along today. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Ms. Keisha, would you do the roll call, please? All right, we have Chase Chisholm. Here. Commissioner Walden. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Mayor LaPaz. Here. Commissioner Millender. Here. And Commissioner Gray. Here. Okay. Next on our, thank you, and next on our agenda is approval of the February 21st, 2023 uh, regular meet, uh, CRA meeting minutes. Did everyone have a chance to review that document? Do we have a motion regarding that? A motion to approve. Okay. A second? I'll second it. Okay, and that motion is by Commissioner Brown, second by Ms. Chisholm. Uh, is there any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, then, and that um, motion carries for the minutes. Um, this is the public comment uh, portion of the meeting. If there's anyone in the public that would like to speak on a CRA item uh, regarding the CRA or the CRA district, an item that is not on this agenda, now is the opportunity to speak under public comment. Okay, we do have a few uh, members of the public in the audience today, uh, but there's no indication that anyone wants to speak. So we'll move to our staff reports and with our CRA director, our city administrator, Ms. Dempsey. All right, our Duke Energy EV charging station, we have signed the host agreement, so we're just waiting on them to come back and do the site visit, but that we're still in the pro process of doing that. Um, our facade grant projects, the 201 Northwest 11th Street and the 403 Northwest 11th Street, they both hold their building permits. Um, the Coastal Edge Salon, they've started removing some of their wood rot um, the, for the, the home there on 11th Street. I don't know which one's which, the 201 and the 403. But the home there, she's got her windows ordered and the, they've got the paint in, but they both have their building permits and they're starting the work. The 201 Marine Street, he's asking for an extension. He says, well, he, he told me this morning that they would be in to pull a permit today, but his nails are on back order from China. But he has, re that he's ordered his metal roofing and he's waiting on that. Um, they're holding off on putting a dumpster in there because it's going to have to sit on the sidewalk and he doesn't want to, we don't want to put it there before construction starts and it's just sitting there. But he's asking on an extension on his start date. To have what kind of, 30 days? Or 30 what? days. Okay. Um, well, can we, do we want to approve the extension? I mean, he still has time to get the job done uh, within this yeah, it was six just, months Yeah, to start within 30 days, but he still has the, Three months, Three so months to mm -hmm. get it complete. We have six months left in this fiscal year, so we want to make a motion to uh, give uh, Mr. Russell a, an extension. I will make that motion. Okay. Second. Can I say something? Yes. I, yes. I spoke to him. We're kind of neighbors, and uh, he needed the extension because if he starts now, he's going to have that dumpster out on the street during Riverfront Festival. Oh. I don't think anyone wants that. Is he going to have to have it? Well, let's see. No. If we give him a month extension, he then he's going to start not. the day after. Okay. So a one, a one month, 30 day extension. Okay. On, on start date. Is there any other discussion? Any other discussion? 
Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, and then that motion carries. All right, well, that's good. Thank you for that information, too. Don't want that out there. All right. Uh, we did we advertise for the volunteer for the CRA board. So now we have three letters of interest, and the city commission will make that appointment on the April 6th meeting. And I've sent all of y'all them, all three letters, so you have them. Um, the downtown cleanup in preparation for the Riverfront Festival on April 22nd is started. Um, we'll continue to do that. Like I said, I really want to hold off to, to about two weeks before the festival to really get started because I don't want them to go clean it up and then it gets dirty again. But um, we, he's been doing some work down around the uh, retention area and cleaning up down there. And he is our new landscape employee, our landscape maintenance, and this is Mr. John Williams. And he's, um, if we want to go ahead and get him here and let him come up and introduce himself, then he can get back to work. Okay, you want to do that now instead of waiting uh, It's up to you guys. We can we can go ahead and do that, and then we can kind of drop back to Mr. Mr. Hartman. John, you want to come up to the podium? Hey everybody, I'm John Williams. Uh, Hello, nice to see you. Pleasure this, to be here. This is Commissioner Gray and Commissioner Millender, myself, Mayor Brenda LaPaz, they call me Brenda or Mayor, and Commissioner Sabrina Brown and Commissioner Keith Walden, Miss Chase Chisholm. And you'll see these two downtown. They have, and this one as well, they have businesses downtown. So, yeah, I've, okay. I've definitely seen all the faces once or twice. All right, very good, very good. Um, I understand, I talked with Dustin this morning and he says that uh, y'all, uh, he's setting a, a in place your work schedule for you uh, so that you'll do certain things on certain days of the week. Yes ma'am, uh, right now I'm just trying to feel out how much work we got and, and really make a schedule out. Mm -hmm. uh, really focusing on a Marine Street, a Riverwalk, and 98 to Tilly Miller Bridge. Pretty much established Tuesday is going to be litter pickup. And Thursday is focusing on mow. Okay, and and uh, the district has been somewhat neglected, but uh, we know, and I, at least I do, that it's going to take you some time to, to get it back uh, in order. Well, I'll so. get it pristine for the festival. All right, that'd be great. That'd be great. And have they set up a time for you at the DOC to get your certification for inmate? I believe there's about a month wait. Okay, all right, that'll give you time to get acclimated to the other. Things, and you're our first uh, employee for the CRA for the city of Carabelle ever. So uh, congratulations. Um, I'll do the city justice. All right. I, I want to say um, uh, back, um, I, this was probably in 2015, uh, they, the um, Streets and Roads Department was getting all strung out because they were trying to do their regular workload and work schedule but then they were taking special requests from citizens or business owners or whatever, special requests, and that was getting them, they were just all over the place, had no real schedule, never knew which way they were coming or going. Uh, so we decided <clears throat> to try something new, and the Streets and Roads uh, fellows uh, took out Courtney's um, card, your business card, and they told the folks that were calling them for special requests, if you'll go in and see um, Miss Courtney. She'll do a work order and then we'll work it into our schedule. And um, I, would, I would like to see that same process uh, for, for uh, Mr. John sure. as well. And uh, in the job description, it says that he works and reports directly to uh, our streets and roads supervisor. So I don't know if we want to have him carry your cards and or Dustin's cards, I'm not sure. But I know that uh, the, the past two contractors would get called by the, you know, property owners, business owners downtown, come to this, come to that. And I, it, it, it gets him, I know he's trying to get on a regular schedule. And we want to know where he is. And I know Courtney and Dustin do and what, he, what he's doing and that kind of thing. And it's hard to do that if he's doing something special for someone somewhere. So it, what what happens is that you'll get your your cards either to contact Dustin or Courtney, whatever y'all decide, if that's okay with this board, 
And uh, if you get, you know, call or someone come over here, do this, you just say, you know, contact us, my supervisor, and they'll issue a work order and we'll get it worked in with my work schedule. Is that all right with you all? Okay. It, it, it is with me, and mm -hmm. I think that's a, a good way to approach it. Uh, maybe the, the card should be Dustin's given out, and Courtney is CRA director, mm -hmm. and we know that. But Dustin's going to be your immediate supervisor. He can coordinate with, with Courtney and handle those things, but that'd be a good approach. The supervisor knows what your schedule is. <coughs> and in the job description, it does say that uh, the last thing is that you work under the uh, direction, something like that, of the streets and roads uh, superintendent. So you don't, you're just, simply, you're, although you're being paid by the CRA, you're an employee. A regular employee, you don't really work at the pleasure of this board, per se. And I don't think he needs to come to every meeting. If there's a special request we have, we can let Courtney know, and we don't even have to wait till the meeting. We can let Courtney know anytime if there's something that we see that needs to be done, especially if it's some kind of an emergency or something, I think. But if there's some super duper special request, we may ask you to come see us. Online. On a regular basis, especially when he gets inmates, he'd have to decline that day of inmates, and that's not a good thing well, to, to do. And I know we, uh, Dustin and I, we've been kind of speaking, and we're really trying to limit the amount of inmates, especially over the summer, with just the drop of workload already from DOC. We're really trying to take it all ourselves, mm -hmm. and we'll kind of see as the summer goes on if, if we need more manpower or mm -hmm. not. Okay, just to see if y'all can handle the jobs yourselves. Yeah, I think once we mm -hmm. get that schedule banged out, I think it will really help things flow pretty streamlined. Okay. Yeah, and I had talked with Dustin about that uh, <clears throat> quite a while back with our limited amount of inmates. And just my feeling is when one of you guys only get one inmate, yes, you really haven't gained much. Yeah, it's just taking it's taking you away from what you could be doing because you're having to supervise an inmate, so you really haven't gained a whole lot. Now, there's some other things that I talked with Dustin about mm -hmm. is con <clears throat> seeing if DOC would allow one of you guys, uh, or they may be getting two inmates for the city of Carabell that day. Let one employee have the two inmates instead of two employees having one inmate apiece. That would be a lot more productive for Dustin and you guys than it would be putting one inmate with one inmate supervisor. So I like the approach of what you just said that you and Dustin were doing there. And I'd also like to say congratulations and welcome aboard. I look forward to a good working relationship with you. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, does anyone else have comments? Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Okay. Uh, back to the inmates and what he's saying. Is, mm -hmm. When you supervise the inmates often, he has to go out there in the morning and wait an hour to get these inmates. Mm -hmm. He comes out, got to work them. They get the breaks. Then you got to take those inmates in an hour early. So that's two hours a day that we're losing the lost productivity. So, if they can do this job, and I like what Mr. Melvin said, put two on one squad, and then, or that way, that one person can get some work done with everything. But they all need to be certified case. Yeah. Yeah. Need one day, he maybe he needs to too. Yeah, but that's true. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of downtime. Super now, I worked for the state, it didn't really matter. <laughs> you know, I was there for eight hours since I didn't make a little dumb compound or out in the public. But you're losing a lot of downtime when you have a you have a disciplinary problem, you got a call, and you gotta sit there and wait till they get an officer out there to deal with that inmate. So I agree with you guys if we could just put them all on one squad and, and that you guys going about your business, and that sounds good. 
But that's up to between Dusty and the warden. And, yeah. 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 We can't make them decisions. No, not for the yeah. not for the DOC. Yeah. No, they they make their decisions. They their inmates. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I just want to say welcome, Lord. And I, I'm looking forward to see our city in time. I know it's going to take yeah. a little time because we've got a lot of work to catch up on. Yeah. I'm glad to see you here. Soon I thought you were going to do a good yeah. job. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. And, and Commissioner uh, Walden is retired from the DOC. Yeah. I, mean, I dealt with inmates. I know all about the downtown. <laughs> uh, but I understand that they're like Houdinis, so be very careful. They, they either want to work real hard or they don't want to work real hard. <laughs> yeah. You will get one every now and then. It will do what you want him to do, but most times they're going to find an easy way out. The county gets all the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we've had our share of the bad ones. <laughs> but, uh, I just want to say thank you. Thank you all very much. And okay. I will do my best to impress you all. All right. Very we good. Forward to, uh, yeah. welcome. I look forward to seeing you out there. All okay. Well. All right. Thank you. And Mr. Dustin is here. Did you have anything you wanted to say? Uh, Thank you. Just to brag uh, on John. Okay. <laughs> That's so good. good so far. Did you want to uh, maybe report on your uh, um, baffle box uh, um, quote that you got or anything like that? You can go ahead and tell us about it real quick. I don't, I don't have the numbers. I okay. had an email to her All right. on that, All right. so I don't have any of the numbers as far as what it would cost. But they said they could get down here whenever we got it approved. All right. Okay, well, thank you, and thank you very much for working with uh, John Williams. We, we, we appreciate it. So the okay. number, Dustin, was $3,004.39. All right. Well, we've got that item on the agenda. All right. Okay. All right. Well, then, if there's no other comments, we'll move on to the city attorney's report. And I have none. Okay. You have none. Okay. Well, that's good, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next item is uh, under new business, and it, it is uh, for 2022-2023 building facade and site improvement grant application for 102 East Meridian Street, and we'll have discussion and possible action on that. Is is the uh, I do not see the appendix. Oh, did he know that uh, he's supposed to be here? Okay, and it does say that in the application. So how do we want to, to um, handle this? And I know they want to get their project going. <laughs> Does anyone have their phone the phone number? We could a contact number. We I mean, call I have and, one on this and uh, table the item to the end of this meeting and come back <coughs> to it. You want me to step out and call while y'all? Okay, so uh, Mr. Hartman, do, can we just? Yes. Do we need to table the item to the end of the meeting and yes. see? If, okay. Just a motion to table it to the end. Okay, of the just uh, somebody. Uh, how about a motion to table this to the end of the meeting for last item? I'll make that motion to table to the end of the agenda. I'll second. And that. Um, Motion is by Commissioner Millender, second by Commissioner Brown. Is there any further discussion? Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, and that motion carries. <coughs> all right, so um, under old business, there is none. And then we just move right on into uh, Inovia Consulting Group Projects, our engineer, and I'll, I'll turn it over to you, sir, Mr. Russell Marge. And item one is the Marine Street Revitalization Project Progress Report Discussion Possible Action and Any Changes. Okay. Um, we updated the final plans and specifications uh, as directed by uh, DEO and uh, Fred Fox Enterprises. And we submitted those back to DEO on March the 14th. Um, the revisions were related to the Davis Bacon Waste decision. Um, and also to include an additive alternate for um, replacing all of the fence along the seawall, as we discussed before. So that's in that's in their hands to review at this time. Uh, as soon as we get that approval, we'll be ready to advertise for bids. 
what is Davis Bacon? What is uh, that's a that's a federal rule. So when uh, federal money is spent, um, there are minimum wage requirements that the contractor has to comply with. And we'll, we had to do a uh, we did a resolution at our last meeting uh, for our water and our sewer grant that we have there in Lanark, uh, the sewer improvements. Lanark right. Is, will we have to do that? Yes, very well? similar. And uh, so we'll have to do that. We the, won't need another resolution. We will need we already one. Have a resolution. Right. Okay, since we've right. done that recently. Right. All right, okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I'm going fencing. Yes. It, it won't leave my mind, Mr. Russell. Yes. Is there an opportunity or a chance for us to get additional funding out of this request on that change for that? Stainless steel fencing? Right, well, we've actually, we've asked for the maximum amount of funding available. Um, that's that's what is in the application. So, to answer your question, I, I, I don't see that there's additional money available. Um, now, we did have, uh, you know, the gateway structure uh, was an additive or an unmet need item um, as an alternate. So, uh, you know, the money that you might spend on that, you could take and spend on the fence, if that's more a priority. It, 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 I, don't, I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but I just, I just can't get it off my mind about the fencing. I would just love to see us to be able to, and I know money is, is the issue, is to be able to put that stainless steel, I mean, have that stainless steel fencing put along that seawall, something that's solid, secure, that's going to last for many, many, many years. Right. In my travels, and you and I have had conversations outside of the room about fencing, I've looked at different styles and what have you. The stainless steel fencing, I'm not trying to sell it, I'm just trying to talk that it's good fencing mm -hmm. and it's attractive. And um, for our fencing, the current fencing that's up there, everybody knows it's weak. And it's, yeah. it's soft, it falls easy, it, and it was attractive when it was put up there. And it's aged some now, but it's, it's, not, it's not stable. And I would right. love to see us to be able to put something like that stainless steel fencing up there that would be there for many years to come right. and very solid. Well, now, the, so the plans that we submitted to the EO do include replacing all of that fence with that very product as a as an uh, additive alternate so that is in the bid okay but i know that we had had this discussion about the fencing at another at a meeting prior to this a little quite yes. some time back but when you got the pricing on it the pricing was so high we didn't think we were going to be able to go there um i th i think there's an opportunity to use the money that might be spent on the on the gateway structure yeah. that would that would fund that. I, I, I think there's room in the budget. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just bringing it up again because if there's a way for us to address it, I'd like for us to address it. If, right. I mean, I don't know what the rest of the board feels, but I think it's a substantial thing to address if we can't. That's just my opinion. Okay, I think it is uh, legitimate to address it and uh, want to remind everyone that we did, uh, in our budget, put $75,000 set aside uh, to leverage with this grant money. So maybe there, there will be enough. I can't remember the amount you said because it was so much. I just... 80000 I just didn't remember it. And you didn't. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have that number with me, but I'll... I'll look that up and just I'll send that to Courtney just to okay. to follow up on on what we think that budget right. amount would be. We know we need the street lights replaced and the boardwalk. Re I mean, there's so many yeah, needs. I'm not, yeah, I'm not there. trying to take anything away from what we have. I just mm -hmm. want to bring that up, and if there there's a way that we can wiggle that in there, I'd love to see us do that. Anyway, that's just me. Here. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, is there anything else on that item? Uh, no, ma'am. But um, okay. as, soon, as soon as we get that approval, um, we'll have the ad advertisement for bid. I'll, I'll let Courtney review and approve it. That'll go to the Times. 
uh, Fenton City News Herald and Tallahassee Democrat. All right, and so if that if that can happen before we meet again, we want. I would like for him to go ahead and advertise. I mean, we've been at this for I would three, expect, almost three years. Yeah, right. I would, I would expect so, to have that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just go ahead and advertise. Don't come back to wait for us to tell you to advertise. Right. All right. Okay. <laughs> Move it if that's all right. Yes. Okay. Certainly. Okay. Let me see here. I had. Okay. And we're waiting for this. Did you, did you get in touch with Mr. Hanway? I did. He, he's okay. not going to make it. All right. So he'll, he's going to be here? No. Oh, he's not going to make it. All right, well, we'll take that up at the end as we've discussed. Okay, as we motion. <clears throat> All right, so item two is uh, progress of the military service flagpoles memorial at Veterans Park and discussion and possible action if there are any recommended changes. <coughs> All right, uh, uh, pushing the contractor here to nail down a date for us, and he is telling us that it will be before May 15th. So that that is that is pushed out um, uh, more than a month, but uh, May fifteenth. He he says on or before May fifteenth he will he will be mobilized. So uh, in terms of a groundbreaking ceremony, I'm not sure that we want to schedule that yet. Um, I would say at the next meeting we may have a, a better time frame. Okay. Of that. And then already be mobilized before the next meeting? It's April the 17th, I think, is the next meeting. He, he may be, um, but we can still do the groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be, the, the, you know, when he starts. Yeah. Okay, uh, and I just uh, wanted to, um, did you did you get any information, uh, any quotes on doing the reconstruction of the inbound water services in that in veteran? Right. I'm, I'm expecting that that's going to be included as part of the work that they're already uh, proposed. Um, but uh, once he once he gets on site, we'll review that a little closer. Um, but I am expecting that that will be included with the work that's being proposed. Okay. All right. I'm going to talk to uh, the commission now about the money on this project. Uh, the total amount budgeted is 115300 for this fiscal year. We've already spent money on the, on the uh, project last year. When it's all done, I'll tell you what the total project was, but we won't worry about that now. We're worrying about this year's project, our budget. We've got uh, 90000 budgeted from the CRA <coughs> budget and 25300 from the American Rescue Plan. Uh, Act and that uh, that uh, Duggar's bid amount was one hundred three eight hundred eight one thousand three dollars and eight hundred eight. Um, the that left uh, hundred uh, excuse me eleven thousand four hundred ninety two dollars. Um, they needed to staff. We needed another flagpole for Space Force, and staff has ordered that flagpole, and we signed a check for it uh, yesterday. It was two thousand six hundred sixty four dollars and forty six cents. So that leaves $8,827.54 available on, uh, in this budget that we have right now. So we'll see. Um, we're going to talk further about later on the agenda about some things that we wanted to add to this. But it would be good to know if, uh, we, if that water is included in the in the in the project so we we can know what we can do with this eight thousand eight hundred dollars okay okay all right I'll, I'll make sure we address that right up front um, okay. as he mobilizes all right okay thank you Is, do y'all have any other comments on this item okay all right then we'll move to item three uh discussion possible action regarding findings of geotechnical radar investigation at four locations on Gray Avenue, right back here, uh, between Barefoot Lane and Northeast 12th Street. All right, they um, are mobilized right now, actually doing some borings. Uh, I did get a preliminary <coughs> review uh, back from them. Um, they did encounter loose organic material, which uh, I, I think it's going to be muck type material. Um, and that was at 6 to 12 feet deep. Um, they eliminated other culprits so far, such as um, a sewer or you know a void that's opened up. So we really think this muck material that's consolidating 
and uh, they're going to continue with their borings and make their recommendations. Uh, preliminarily, they are thinking that um, the, that particular area, the entire area would need to be addressed as opposed to individual spots where the distress is occurring because um, that muck material would consolidate over time and we may get more distress over, over time in different areas. Uh, and there's a couple ways to go about doing that. You may remember our Kehoe's addition project where one option was to uh, dig out the road about six feet deep and then replace it with select material. The option we chose was to place the geo, uh, geotechnical fabric over that area. It's, uh, it's a cheaper way to do it. It's, it's less earthwork. And uh, from what I can tell, that's, that's been working like a champ out there. So that may be an option here. Um, so we'll, we'll let them finish the work and give us their recommendation. But I, just as a heads up, I think, I think that's what we're looking at for a repair here. Okay. Thank you. Are there comments? Yeah, there's a family of beavers out there. You can contract with them, they fix that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, make it deeper. Okay. All right. Uh, so the quote, uh, I'm going to talk, to talk about some money again. The quote was $26,000 for this uh, geotechnical radar investigation, and we have actually budgeted uh, $18,155 for this. So, you know, it's not straight out of the maintenance. And that leaves us seven thousand eight hundred forty-five dollars that needs to be funded just for this investigation, uh, and and I would recommend that would come out of the uh, maintenance and repair. And there's twenty-four thousand seven hundred and fifty-seven dollars in there now, so um, that's what the what I would recommend where we would get the remainder of the funding. And and I believe it was last month we all agreed in principle that we wanted to wait until all this construction that's going on in the area. We've got two subdivisions being constructed on each side of the road there until that's pretty much completed before we do the repairs on the road. I think that's wise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that would definitely put us into the next budget year or maybe right. the following. So but we'll, we'll, we'll get the funding to certainly uh, pay for the investigation. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Okay. Um, that's that's it for you. Unless you have something else you want to report on, sir. Um, I think that's, that's all I can think of at the moment. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, then we'll move on to our CRA board projects, and uh, we have item one, which is discussion and possible action regarding our 2022-2023 uh, CRA expense to budget. Report. And uh, you all uh, received a copy of that. So um, I just want to call, uh, right up, uh, first of all, I called uh, Miranda because usually by now we have received our tax increment portions from the county. And once the county pays their, their uh, tax increment, then the city pays theirs. Uh, usually we get it in January, and last year it was late, it came in February. And Miranda checked, and it has not yet paid. So she's going to call over there to their offices to. And she has night called, night. and she's waiting on a call back. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, then um, under our CRA, uh, we have the CRA maintenance salaries, and then the next uh, is the CRA uh, maintenance contract, which we did not budget for, but we've spent seventeen thousand five hundred dollars out of that. But we're six months into the to the fiscal year. We had 29,000, basically 30,000 scheduled for salaries. So these salaries were, uh, half of that would come to make up for this uh, the, the maintenance contract. Um, then I just want to just bring some of these to your attention. Under travel, we've got, we're over budget, $1,800. I'm going to check into that. Uh, our liabilities. Liabilities and omissions, uh, errors and omission insurance was 738 more than we budgeted. And I'm just going over this because we're six months into the year. Our small equipment purchase, now uh, we have not, uh, we'll go back to maintenance and repair. We had $25,000 budgeted. 
We've only used 243, and that's where I was saying the remainder of, what was it, the Barefoot Lane, the, um, Great the yes, the radar, the $7,000 from the radar could come out of that, the radar investigation. And then um, we haven't used uh, no advertising. Our uh, accounting and audit back up there at $10,000, that will definitely be paid out. They've uh, been here already this year. Y'all probably saw them. Um, then the small equipment startup purchase, uh, we budgeted $40,358. And we knew we had a $15,000 surplus more than we estimated we needed so far. Uh, they've spent $12,998, and what did you all purchase with that for the We purchased new? a trailer, a zero-turn mower, a blower. He had to ask him, but I think that he may have got some clippers, or some small equipment. Okay. He still needed some weed eaters, but he had weed eaters in the street road department that they, because they were getting, in, they were getting more inmates, and they had purchased more weed eaters than they're using. So he didn't necessarily need to buy more weed eaters because they had some there. Um, he is asking though for a, a container to use for CRA equipment. So we did not have that budgeted and I hadn't approved that yet. How, how much is that? He was about 3,500. I, I haven't okay. got a price, but just going off of what I think we paid for our last one. A what? Uh, Connex. So he has no oh, work on that equipment right now. Yeah. Just to keep it separate. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. keep it separate. And yeah. safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we've already had a bunch of stuff stored out here before we got to the uh -huh. container. Yeah. So I mean, he's got room in the pole barn for it, but just to yeah, try it ain't to really right, right. Right. Uh, right now, there's uh, 27360 remaining in that budget line item. Yeah, so some of that will be for the vehicle. Yeah. Because we will purchase a vehicle from the Streets and Roads. The Streets and Roads new vehicle should be here in April, and then we'll sell the CRA one of the Street and Road vehicles. Right. Uh, so a used vehicle and a Connex container. Okay. All right. I anticipate that maintenance and repair cost to go up too now that we have a full-time employee mm -hmm. catching up on mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have, uh, and I have not, I keep forgetting to ask Miranda, we've got this other charges and obligations, $3,273. I don't know, I don't know what that is, <laughs> but I'll find out. <laughs> it's usually no. where she doesn't know where to place something in the okay. budget. That's, that way it sticks out and All we right. can um, put it where it needs to go. Okay. Well, no, she spent it. <laughs> I don't know what she spent it yeah, on. Yeah, no, she, it, she just don't know which line item to attach it to. Okay. And when we say she, we're talking about Miranda, our HR, finance, human relations, and property management clerk. But she does most of our, all of the finances. Um, and then our, on our consulting uh, services, uh, we're, we're pushing the limit there on that, on our engineering. So, sorry. Russell's yeah. work a half a year for free. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then she's got another item under capital projects that's 1545 I don't know what, what she knows. She probably and that came up last last month and I didn't get a chance to ask her what that was for. Um, so that's it. I want to tell you about the facade grants. Uh, we, we allocated $80,000 for the facade grants. Um, as of today, we've got uh, $68,832 out. We've funded uh, about a $5,000, let's see what she was, for 11, uh, 111 Northeast Avenue B, B uh, repainting, $5,064, and that's, that's paid. And then the other three, that we just, uh, Courtney just reported on was $52,832. So that has, but that's a total of $68,832 um, that we've approved. No, we approved, that's $52,832 that we've approved. And if we approved this one today, 
that's 68,832 that leaves us 11,168 in the $80,000 uh, budget line item for facade grants. You can leave that in the event someone wants a smaller grant. We can take that money and reallocate it. We're not obligated to, to even give facade grants. That's just something that, that we offer to the public in the CRA district. So keep that in mind. We may want to reallocate that to fencing or something like that. Okay? And that, that's all I have to, to say on the, um, on the expense to budget report. I just wanted to go over it really carefully since we're six weeks six months into the to the year. Okay. Anything else? All right, then we have uh, item two, discussion of possible action regarding uh, clean out of the baffle boxes associated with the Marine Street bioretention cell stormwater drainage system. And Courtney, you work with Dustin on this. <coughs> We had two companies that were recommended to us by the Water Management District to clean out these baffle boxes. So out of the two companies that were recommended, we only could get in touch with the one company, Badger. Uh, they're, so it says Jacksonville, but they all, they're out of Panama City. And that quote came in at $3,004.39. And what I'm understanding is that they have to be um, he, he talked with Mr. Churchill, but he's not certified. They have to be certified with the DEP to um, yes. provide the maintenance on these baffle boxes that dump into the uh, to the public waters, like the Carabell River. So this is the only one you all could find that was, was certified. So um, I, I would recommend that we go ahead and have the baffle box uh, cleaned and maintained or anything associated with that bioretention cell that was put in in 2014 or 15, and it's it's never had any attention. And you'll see they have an eight hours on there, and that's their minimum. They require you to pay for that eight hours. Mm -hmm. And Dustin said if they finish, he's, he talked to the gentleman, if they finish yeah, They would soon, do some other work in the, in the yes. area. Mm -hmm. In the CRA area. So um, I, I would request a motion to go ahead and, and approve this this quote, estimate, as they're calling it here, to, to get that work done. I'll make the motion to approve. Okay. I'll second it. All right. And I have some questions. Okay. Um, how soon could they start on this? And it'll only take, you said, like a day, eight hours? Yeah, it'll be in a day. Um, he'll have to schedule it. I'm not sure what their timeline looks like. Just tell him to keep in mind we're a front desk. Thank you. <laughs> Well, yeah, if they, they probably wouldn't work on a Saturday mm -hmm. anyway. I don't know how the ground will look around it, if they will need time to clean up afterwards. It's a truck they bring in and they'll pump it out. Okay. So there shouldn't be any digging or anything mm -hmm. that they have to do. They'll, they'll just pull up the lid and they'll vacuum it out. Gotcha. Right? Okay. That's, a, that's a big metal lid. You know, human beings can fit in there. So they open that up and then they work on it. All right, so we have that uh, motion by Commissioner Brown, second by Commissioner Ch Chisholm to award this uh, quote to Badger to clean out our bio retention cell baffle boxes. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, and that motion carries. All right. And then the next item is uh, item three, which we've had before on here, Discussion of possible action regarding repairs and upgrades to the clock tower at Veterans Park, and that quote was $6,190. So we may, I may ask it to put this on here again next uh, month. I'm, I'm trying to find out if we'll have funding, uh, the $8,000 that I mentioned out of the Veterans Park budget line item that we can, we can put, uh, put this $6,000 to that use that $8,000 to repair this clock tower for 6000 That's what I was going to recommend mm -hmm. earlier, but we need to know a definite, I guess, on that water line mm -hmm. first. Or, or get a little, uh, um, couple more months into the, to the um, fiscal year and see how our budget is looking. Right. Will they, their quote is, how long is that good for, do you know? 
usually I 30 days. Okay. <coughs> I don't anticipate it going up. Yeah. It should stay the same. All right. Okay. And then um, item four is discussion of possible action regarding bids to replace the Sands Park fencing. And Courtney, I'll let you talk to us. About I got that. two quotes. We got a quote to do a five foot fence, and then we're we'll back and asking to quote us on a four foot fence. <coughs> the five foot fence came in at twenty eight thousand eight hundred and four dollars. We can take off this $944 for tear out and removal of the existing fence. I think our guys can do that, so that would save us a little bit of money. The four foot fence, he cut the replacement in half. He gave us a discount, so that was $472 to remove and haul off. Um, <coughs> so if we took that off, he, he could do the fence for $25,860. Uh, we have budgeted $25,000. But uh, am, uh, do I understand that if it's over twenty five thousand, we have to put you it out? You have to give out for bids. Mm -hmm. And so, did Mr. Good Neighbors fencing? Did did he know that we were just giving an estimate? Okay. I mean, when he provided the estimate, we didn't even know what it was going to come in at. Mm -hmm. So, if I understood you correctly, if we remove the old fence, you'll put up a four foot chain link described. That I read what he sent in. Um, for twenty five thousand eight hundred and sixty. Yeah. Just FY because I know that this come this has been coming up a lot. Um, the category two bumped up to thirty five thousand. Category one is twenty. So they move those categories around a little bit on that CCNA. Depending on when we the competitive negotiation act thing that we have to bid on. So and it's, it was 25 forever, is what we, I had it in my head too, and it recently came up that they have bumped those limits up. The, the, Just FYI. The maybe. state legislature bumped them up, or how? Yes. Uh -huh. So, we so as far as mandatory, I mean, we're not, we wouldn't be in violation if, uh, I can take a quick look at it, but if it's, um, usually these are what they call category two, is $35,000. So we're required to competitively bid if it's 35 or up. And we could have our own policy, and it's always a good idea to get quotes, but just for everyone for the future, so you can get 25 out of our head and put 35 in. <laughs> Inflation. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So we don't need to go for a bid. If, this is the thing. If you can, you can always go for bid just to be get the best deal, and then, but you don't have to. Comments? Yeah, just one question. Uh, I wonder if there's a chance that we can do it in the house, put the fence up ourselves. I know we questioned whether we could do it, whether our folks could put up the fence at the uh, cemetery. That was a non-issue. That was easy. that was done perfectly by our people. I've installed chain on the fence before, so has Commissioner Baldwin sitting down there. And it's not too difficult. You'd have to talk to Dusty about that. And I don't know what his, his skill levels are. I really would not want to have him do something he's not comfortable with. But now if he says he can do it, then he probably can save quite a bit of money. Save a lot of money. I think at that time, uh, when they did the, the fencing around the cemetery, he had a, a crew member who was who knew how to do fencing. Well, Evidently, he had worked in fencing before, but he, he doesn't have that crew member now. No, he never had put up a fence. I talked to him very well. He He's a skilled young man that he can do a lot. He's handy. He's uh, a person that does a lot of things for himself. It's like when we bought the fencing material for the uh, cemetery and I've had a discussion with him and he said, Mr. Tony, I've never put it up. And he says, I can do it. Well, he did. He done a super job at it. So, uh, but anyway, it's just a thought that it would save a lot of money if 
if we could do it in house, but if we can't, we can't. Okay. And Miss Keisha had. I just comment. want to point out that it's mowing season, and they did the other fence during the winter time. So I do want to point that out because they are going to be extremely busy. And so where did he say he could do this if we approve it? Uh, this guy, he'll schedule us and he probably come. within a week or two. And I, I would say that the chain link fencing is, is, I've never put, well I've helped my husband put it up, but <laughs> if, it, if it's not on straight flat ground, then as they need to, they're going to have to make some adjustments or that fence is going to be going let's, like uh, this. Let's have a professional do it then. Yeah, we could, I mean we have the funding in the CRA we budget. Save a little, we'd probably save a lot of money, but we're going to turn around and get it somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, that's true, and yeah, we're putting it back out in the community. Whatever so. this board wants, what we do. Uh, I want to say though that I, I like to uh, keep the, um, I, uh, now, generally, Courtney would go ahead, if we approved something, she'd go ahead and like with that $3,000, and she would get it done on the, on the city side. But on the CRA, we, we get into the nitty-gritty of it a lot of times, don't necessarily have to. But I, I, want, I, I, I would recommend that we keep our, um, our rate uh, for approval on the, on the administrative side at 25,000, even though it went up, that we don't have to go out for bids to 35 to you know keep it at 25. But we can, evidently, Mr. Hartman, decide uh, amongst ourselves whether or not we want want to, for instance, take a quote that's higher than than the 25 without going out to bid. But I would like for the city administrator to continue to come to us with anything 25 and uh, over 25. Yes. Okay. And, and when we say that, um, what I'm what I'm talking about is just only specifically: do we are we required by law to put it out for competitive mm -hmm. solicitation? And and so the city certainly it's always good policy to have you know uh, limits on the amount that that staff can authorize being spent and then also you know uh, again inflation is crazy but a ten thousand fifteen twenty thousand dollar expense you might as well get a couple quotes just so you don't get skinned for a couple thousand dollars <laughs> now the four foot versus five foot i mean um four foot four i suggested foot she get a quote for the four foot because if you yeah, difference. some difference. But we're just trying to keep kids in and dogs out, and yeah. I don't think a foot's going to... I think four foot's be I think four foot's, foot's perfect. And we did mention before that we don't really have a, a vandalism problem there right. like we have at our... That's just other. keep kids in mm -hmm. and out on the street. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, that fence looks pretty good, too, really. It's going to be beautiful. there longer than we're going to be there. I know it. The one at Tilly Miller Park right. he's talking we'll about. It. It's nice. Right, it's a commercial grade. It's yeah. not your resident uh, average. Yeah. And good, uh, good neighbors installed that fence. Yeah. So we need a motion. Yeah. I make a motion. We go with that. The four foot, the four foot fence. Okay. And I'll second that. Okay. So, um, uh, Commissioner Walden. Uh, made the motion second by Commissioner Brown to approve the bid for the four-foot fencing by Good Neighbors Fence um, at uh, 26. Well, it's going to be 25,860, and and staff will remove the old fencing. Is there any discussion? And Keisha did uh, make a good suggestion the other day when we were discussing this in the office. Uh, that uh, there's still some good pieces to that fence and that can be salvaged and stored at the lay down yard for other locations. Sure. Other needs. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So, uh, being no more discussion, those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay. And that motion carries. I do have a question. Okay. <laughs> Did you say when they could start on this? I haven't coordinated with him, but usually he's pretty good about coming on over and doing. So we just need to let Dusty know before he comes so he can tear the old fence down. That's the only thing I see. I do know on Riverfront Festival Day, the quilt ladies. Mm -hmm. They are using the park for their quilt show. Okay. It's also pretty popular um, during Easter. Birthday mm -hmm. um, The too. churches yeah. have. Yeah. see a lot of birthday cards down there. Good. Good. 
Okay, um, our other items, the last item, last section we have is other items brought forward by CRA board members. Any items of concern or anything? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <Start turning. laughs> um, when we had did those classes down at Daytona, they had talked about one of the things that we should spend or think of spending our CRA money on is blight in our district. As everybody knows, and I hear people come, especially because I was there for eight years, is that windows being covered with that board on the old corner store, because it looks horrible. And that is everybody's passing through here. They see that it makes us look like a town that's dying and drying up. Now, I've been told that the Rio Carabell has had plans on painting that and making it look nice, but now that's been three months ago. So, it, I don't know if they're still planning on doing that or not because they said they are, but they said nothing's been done. So is that an issue that we should maybe to reach out, somebody reach out to Mike and find out or or try to push this on? You know, they need to do something because it does, it looks horrible. Okay, um, I'll ask Mr. Hartman, is, is, what can we do? And it does, it does look it rough. Does mm -hmm. look I think the idea, the first idea is the right start, is let's reach out to them, tell them it's available, try to get them to take advantage of it. Well, we don't know. Well, and they may have, I haven't followed up with them, but Mr. Owen had reported that he was going to get the Carabelle Artists Association to, he called it an artist attack, and uh, that they were going to go over there and paint some murals on, on all that plywood. From what course, I understood, they got approved <coughs> to do that. It just never happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They wanted to donate the materials donated. So who? they got, okay, Mr. Hollis did approve for them to do that? From what I was told, they got the okay to do it, and that's the last mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, Mr. Right. Owen approached me about the city donating the materials, and I told him he would have to come before the board. The association would have to come before the board. We can't just... Uh -huh. What do you, so the the artist association would need to ask for probably from the CRA some. Just trying to think. Yeah, we they they could ask know? us to donate the materials, get approval from the owner. We just want to see all that before we. Give them money. Yeah, we give them money to go. You know, if I if, yeah, we want everybody an agreement. Well, we have you know we have done murals for sure. Absolutely. I suppose we could um, help help. You know, these would be miniature murals, which would be fine. Uh, we don't have it budgeted, but we, we can reallocate, you know. So and maybe, maybe I'm, uh -huh. just the first part is that, is, did we close out the grant? I mean, is there any way for to encourage them to apply for a grant? One of our uh, Mr. Hollis has been encouraged and, and encouraged yeah. for a decade to <laughs> apply for he's a CRA go. grant. No, he will not. But he'll let people... Paint on this building. They don't cost him anything. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can we ask yeah. him to take the boards down? But I think we can. can ask. You won't get well, he was going to take the boards down. He was there to take it down after that storm, but they came over and stopped him. They said, no, leave it up and we'll paint it. Okay. So he has already attempted <laughs> to take them down, and they stopped him from taking it down. Maybe let, let's let Courtney. Um, to. <laughs> <laughs> see what he wants to do. Yeah, contact him and see what he yeah. wants to He's do. Is Mr. Owen? No, Mike Harless. Mr. Mike. Mike, 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 Mike Harless. Uh -huh. Mike Harless. Uh -huh. and, I, I, I know him very well. Yeah, and yeah. see, yeah. Mike Hollis. Like, 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 Sabrina <laughs> says what, what he wants to do, what Mike Hollis wants to do. We will work with him. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and if he wants that painted, then we can reach out to the Carabelle Artists Association. Are they wanting to paint the wood or the glass? The wood. The wood. The, wood. Oh, the, wood. Oh, the, wood. Well, the glass, that looked a lot better. Yeah, that's what I was going to Paint the board down and paint the glass. Mules. Much. <laughs> that we get Who's paying what? Yes. yes, Greg. Keep in mind, you know that that plywood is just temporary. You no, know, so you go yeah. painting it. You know, you're that's just basically saying. throwing money away. Yeah. So, exactly. you know, I really wouldn't be giving them, you know. Yeah. Because the, mur the murals, I think there was an agreement. You get them all painted up, and then Mike says, I'm taking them down, and then what do you do with them, you know? Yeah. But it won't, 
it won't hold up as well on the glass because it will be anybody that walks by there with mm -hmm. a fingernail and runs it across and the glass. And it does get it wet off. there because where that almond is not fully attached, <coughs> it runs water. I know this very well. Mm -hmm. It runs water all down the glass, which it probably run on the, the mural too if it's on that wood. Uh, well, uh, let's just uh, direct Miss Courtney to contact Mr. Paulus, and uh, and uh, don't wait till next month. But go ahead and let us know so we can be thinking about it. How we how maybe um, if he wants to have it painted, maybe Courtney could then follow up with the artist association. I'll try to find you the president of the art. I think it might be uh, Jeannie Newton might be the president of the artist association. Okay. If not, she can let you know who it is. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. So, is that all right, Ms. Chase? All right. Now, any are there any other items? Okay. I wanted to ask Miss Courtney also to follow up with Chester Reese because we're moving into the second half of the fiscal year, and let's see what he's planning for the Mariners Memorial. Uh, if he's going to be able to get that done, we did budget it in our our budget, okay. so we want to you know see if that's how that's working out for him. And then we have variable message boards all over town, and I think of, I know most of them have emergency management on the back, and I really do appreciate all of those message boards <coughs> notifying the traffic and the pedestrians of the parade. But I think it's time for them to at least be turned off if they can is it still notifying all the traffic that we're having a parade and we need to kind of... Where are those? Uh, there's one at the IGA, one at the uh, Welcome Park. The Welcome Park one is one that we just put out and it's to notify the people of the crosswalk because okay. they, the local people don't know that there's a crosswalk and they don't know to stop when, the, when it's blinking. Okay. So they're just going right through there. Okay. And so the chief asked us to put that out for just a week because I think as, as they're coming and going from the dollar store and they're reading it, and my dad was sitting in, in here and the, the chief was saying, and he said, a crosswalk, what are you talking I've never seen it. <laughs> so the locals don't even pay attention to it. They don't know it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't realize so it. That one will be coming up. It's only out for a week. But okay. I haven't noticed the emergency management. Yeah, because right. there's two. We do appreciate them bringing them out. Maybe Tim, uh, Keith Lucas. There's uh, one across the bridge coming into town, too. I see. Uh, <laughs> he can at least maybe go turn them off until they can. They might have a problem with getting them towed back of, over on the other side of the county. So that's it. Our next meeting is April the 18th, 2020. And then we do have to go back on the sorry. Oh, oh, yes, we do, and thank you for reminding me that. You said he was, he's not coming. So I spoke to him, and he is in Tallahassee and is, was unavailable to come. He I, he said he would um, like to wait till next month. I did tell him that he only has a limited amount of time to get completed, um, and that, um, that the more he puts it off, the more it's... But, but he I says think, his exterior portion of the grant, he would be done, if he got approved in the April, he would be done by the end of April. So he talked like it wasn't going to take him. I have been working with him since December. Yes. Oh, okay. When he first submitted his application in December, and we've been back and forth and back and forth, and we've had to change things. And so he's had it in for a really long time. And I did uh, ask Courtney to ask him to go back and rework his... Um, his uh, um, application, his uh, his list of projects that he was going to do because he had things on there that really didn't qualify for CRA uh, facade grant, and I was afraid if the public saw that they would get confused. Where you you although his total project is going to well meet the cap, he can only qualify for sixteen thousand. Um, he, he needed to take off all of these things that really didn't apply, and he, he did. So he still he still qualifies if we uh, decide to to grant the, the funding. He still qualifies for the maximum amount. 
So we'll we'll just put it if he wants to hold it off another month. He did he did say to you know because he's renovating the whole house completely. Mm -hmm. He that he would go ahead and do the exterior before he started finished off on the interiors. Okay, and this is um, one of two East Meridian. So uh, it's okay with everyone. We'll to try to accommodate him. We will table it. Okay. Can I have a motion to table? A motion to table. To the next meeting. To the next meeting, to the April 17th. And I heard a. Um, I know this lady there. I knew. Okay. I knew what John told me and put it on the little line. Your phone? Um, did you second the yeah. motion? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have a motion by Commissioner Mellinger, second by Ms. Chisholm to table this item until next month. Uh, is there any other discussion? No. Okay, then all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And that motion carries. And is there any more business? Any other items? Okay, then. Anything else? All right, folks, we're adjourned. All right. Thank you. Thank you.